Okay, so I've got our two fractions in a beaker. I've got the stuff that was too big to go through the sieve in this smaller beaker, and the stuff that did go through the sieve in this big beaker, and really there is more than here than I would like to process in one go. But again, just to keep this video brief, I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I would maybe divide this up between two beakers, but uh, we'll just we'll just go we'll just run with it. I'll make it work. And I'll tell you what, if I swirl this stuff around, and I know it's not going to show up on the camera, but if I swirl this stuff around, I can see gold settling to the low part of the beaker. So there's a fair amount of gold in there. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, distilled water in here. Working only with distilled water from now on. I don't want any chlorine in here for two reasons. Number one, I don't want the chlorine present in tap water to uh, interact with the nitric acid I'm going to put in there and create a weak aqua regia that will dissolve any of the gold. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to lose any of the gold. Secondly, there's probably some silver in here. Sometimes there's significant silver. Sometimes there's not. It depends on the particular batch of IC chips you're processing. But uh, I like to um, recover my silver if I can. So I want to keep the silver in solution. So no chlorine, so it doesn't come out of solution as silver chloride. So I'm going to put these in the fume hood, put them on some heat, and add some nitric acid to them. Okay, I've got our two beakers in the fume hood. We're ready to put some acid to them. Now I'm going to put some nitric acid in both of them to start dissolving away the base metals. And I'm going to be pretty conservative with this back one because I know there's a lot of metal in there. And that may just, yeah, whoa, yeah, it's starting to fizz up pretty good there. I'm sure it'll take a lot more acid than that to dissolve it, but I don't want to put too much in at once because I don't want to have a violent reaction, especially once it starts heating up. They've only just started warming up. And then this one here... Put some in. Close the doors on the fume hood. Start the blower. And we'll let it go. I hope it's showing up on the video. We're already getting some uh, brown orange fumes in the beaker in the back. It's going to take a while for the nitric acid to migrate down through all the stuff in the bottom of this beaker, but eventually it'll start doing the same thing. We'll start dissolving the base metals in there. This is going to take a little while and a few additions of acid. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Um, probably come back once it's done, just to keep this video brief. We're actually only a few minutes into the reaction, but I thought I'd give you a quick look and show you. I've got a really vigorous reaction going on in both beakers now. So I'm just going to let this cook. And when it slows down, I'll add a little more acid and uh, keep doing that until there's no more reaction. Alright, it's the next day. I left these on low heat overnight. And uh, there, there's been several additions of acid to both beakers. Uh, came out this morning put a little bit of acid in each beaker, didn't really see any kind of reaction. So I think all of our base metals are probably in solution in both of these beakers. So what I'm going to do now is a little experiment. We're going to see if we've got silver in solution. So I've got some tap water here. I'm going to put a little tap water in this beaker. And I'm going to get some of this solution here. And swish it around, and yeah, see that cloud of that cloud of material in there? That is silver chloride. So we have silver in solution. Now, one reason I did the uh, the big metal bits separately from the finer stuff that went through the sieve is because a lot of times the big bits will have a lot more silver at this point than this stuff will, and a lot of times this, this doesn't have enough silver in it to uh, make it worth recovering. But we're going to test this too, just in case, because sometimes this contains a lot of silver too. You never know until you test. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. A little tap water in here, nice clear tap water. Add a little bit of this. Swish it around, and yeah, I would say there's not as much silver as in there, which is kind of normal. 
but there is a significant amount of silver. So a lot of times I wouldn't bother saving the liquid off of this, this finer fraction of stuff, but I would say there's enough silver in here to make it worthwhile to save it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to filter both of these and just capture the liquid and then um, once the uh, solids are in the filter, I'm just going to rinse the, the, the solids until um, the water's running clear just to get as much of the base metal salts out of it as I can. This blue color is going to be primarily from copper nitrate, but there's also going to be iron in here. There's probably other, other um, metals in here that will dissolve in nitric acid. So we got to get rid of all that and just leave behind the gold. So next step, filtration. Okay, next step is filtration. I've got my vacuum filtration set up. You don't have to use vacuum filtration, but I do just because it speeds things up something wonderful. Once this filter starts getting clogged up with solids out of here, it'll go really, really slow without the vacuum filtration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the contents of these two beakers in here. And at this point, since they both contain a lot of silver, and all of the base metal should be dissolved out of them, then the vast majority of it anyway. I'm just going to dump the contents of both beakers in here and mix it up. I don't care anymore about keeping them separate. But I will wait. I will wait a bit. I'm not going to dump the junk in the bottom of this beaker in here until after I get the liquid from that beaker in, just so I don't plug the uh, filter up worse than I am already. Nice, clean, blue liquid. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, nitrogen dioxide coming out of solution in here. In the partial vacuum in here. Not good for my pump, but this pump's almost on its last legs anyway. I have a new pump. I'm just going to keep running this one until it dies. Okay, now that the liquid's all through, I'm going to put the solids into the filter too. Beaker is a little bit hot. Gonna let the uh, vacuum pull as much liquid out of these solids in here as it can. And I'm just gonna rinse the solids with some distilled water 
until the water starts entering the, the flask down here is clear. Well, that's going to take a little while. I need to refill my water jug here. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it all. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, that's pretty good. I've got a fair amount of rinsing. The liquid's coming through clear now. So I'm just going to let the vacuum pump run until the dripping pretty much stops, just to pull as much of the liquid out of it as I can. Now this pretty blue clean liquid down here has a fair amount of silver in it. Now I have other videos on how I get the silver out of this through cementation on copper. And I'll put a link to one up top right now. Just to unburden, just, just so that this video doesn't get too long. Um, you can watch that other video if you want to. So I will save this liquid and I will uh, cement the silver out of it off camera. Well, this stuff has been running for a while and it's uh, pretty well dried out. So what I'm going to do now set this liquid aside like I said and get the silver out of it off camera but I'm going to put this solids in this filter back in this beaker in fact I'm going to put the filter in there too because I saw some little flecks of gold in the filter before I dumped all of this uh, solid stuff in there so I want to capture all of that and the next step is to make aqua regia and dissolve the gold in here. So for that, we're going to go back in the fume hood and we're going to put some uh, uriatic acid on it and then some nitric acid. Okay, it's time to make aqua regia. So I've got the, uh, the solids in the beaker here back in the fume hood uh, on low heat. Going to add, let me turn the fume hood on. I'll have to yell over it a little bit. Add some uh, muriatic acid. Goodly amount. Going up to about the thousand milliliter mark. Now, see that vigorous bubbling? I saw some little silver bits in there, which I assume are aluminum. Sometimes the inside of the chips have some aluminum in them. The nitric acid isn't going to digest the aluminum, but the muriatic acid is going to attack it pretty vigorously. So I'm not a little too worried about having a little bit of aluminum contamination in there because uh, the aluminum salts will wash out later. All right, so the, uh, the reaction's slowing down, that's good. So now we're going to put some nitric acid in there and make aqua regia. And we should start getting a reaction again as the gold dissolves. Not going to put as much nitric in this time. I'm going to be a little more conservative with it now. I don't want to have a lot of extra nitric acid later when it comes time to drop the gold out of solution. Okay, so that's about eh, 8 milliliters or so. We'll go with that for now and let it cook for a while. It's been a few minutes. Things are warming up in there. We're starting to get some bubbling, some kind of reaction going on. The, uh, the gold there should be starting to go into solution. That's what we want. Just going to let it cook for now. The reaction slows down. I'll put a little more acid in there. Well, it's been a little while. Um, the reaction kind of slowed down. I put another about two milliliters of nitric acid in it and it's bubbling away nicely again. Um, the muddy yellow-brown color that the liquid has turned leads me to believe that maybe I didn't quite get all of the base metals dissolved out with the nitric acid treatment. 
I may have rushed it a little bit, but that's okay. Dropping gold out of solution from uh, IC chip debris is always a dirty gold drop. That gold always needs to be re refined anyway. So if there's a little base metal left in there, I'm not too worried about it. But I did just realize that I forgot to do an important step. I'm going to put a couple milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid in there to uh, make sure that if there's any soluble lead salts in there, they're going to drop out of solution as insoluble lead sulfate. So I've just got some uh, concentrated sulfuric acid drain opener here. Put a couple milliliters in and gonna let it continue to cook. All right, it's been cooking for a while. I'm pretty sure all the gold has gone into solution. Uh, the last addition of nitric acid really didn't produce any fumes. And I think the bubbling I'm seeing right now is just boiling. I don't think it's actually got any kind of reaction going on in there anymore. Uh, we're gonna do a little status chloride test just to make sure that we've got gold in solution, although I am pretty confident that we do. Get some of this liquid here. And we'll put some stannous chloride on it. Oh yeah, look at that. Dark purple black. Okay, so we've got a lot of gold in solution. Good. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna let it cool down. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna denox it because there's probably some extra nitric in here because I don't think the last addition of nitric acid really did anything. So I've got some uh, sulfamic acid here. And it destroys nitric acid by turning it into sulfuric acid and a whole lot of nitrog nitrous oxide gas. So I'm going to be real conservative with my additions just a little bit because it can really bubble up. Oh, that's not too bad. I don't think we have that much extra nitric in here. Yeah, the reactions reaction is getting less with each addition. So we've about killed all the nitric. So I'm going to put a couple more additions of this in there just to make sure we've killed all the nitric and let it cool down. And then once it's cool, I may just let it sit till tomorrow morning. Once it's good and cool, I'm going to filter it again just like I filtered it before. Um, separate the liquid from the mud in the bottom and then we'll be able to drop the gold out of the liquid. As I said, it's going to be a dirty gold drop and hey, I'll take my gold dirty. Dirty gold's better than no gold at all. So, probably see you tomorrow morning. As for that pretty blue liquid I filtered off the chip debris earlier, I am busy recovering the silver from it. I'm cementing it out on copper. And I have lots of videos on recovering silver with cementation on copper. Feel free to check them out. I'll put a link to another one up here in the upper right corner. Well, it's the next day. This has had a chance to cool down. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm set up to filter it again. Just I want to get this liquid off and get out any liquid in the, in the solids down here out of it because that's all contains dissolved gold now. Um, I see that as the liquid cooled down overnight, we got a layer of scum formed here. I imagine there's probably, uh, probably didn't get all the silver out of it, so some of that's probably silver chloride. Maybe there's some lead sulfate, maybe some other insoluble stuff that came out of solution as the liquid cooled down and it settled. That's good. We don't want that contaminating our gold. There's going to be enough contaminants in there already. There's a lot of stuff in IC chips, so this is going to be a good dirty gold drop first time around. Okay, so let me get to filtering this. This is probably going to take a little while once the uh, filter paper starts getting plugged. 
So I won't make you watch all of it, just like the last filtration. I'll cut away. But the goal's the same. First I want to get the liquid through before I plug up the filter too badly. And then I will dump all the solids into the filter and rinse the solids with distilled water until the liquid is coming through clear into the beaker down there. Well, like I said, same process as before. I'll try and get the liquid in and leave this much of the solids behind as I can just to make this go a little quicker. And I can tell the filter's already getting plugged up. So this is going to take a little while. Like I said, I won't make you watch it all. I'll be back. Alright, all the solids are in here. So the vacuum is pulling the liquid through and I'm just gonna do like I did before and rinse the solids with distilled water until the liquid starts coming through into the beaker clear. Because so this yellow liquid contains gold. So I want to get all of it I can out of these solids, out of the filter, everything. So again, this is going to take a while. And I'll be back when it's done. Okay, it's been a little while. I've been uh, doing the rinsing. The liquid's coming off pretty darn clear. I don't see any color left in the filter up here, so I'd say we're good. I'm going to let the vacuum run a little while longer to pull as much of the liquid out of the solids as I can. And once it pretty much stops dripping, I'm going to transfer this back into this beaker and we'll be ready to drop the gold. All right, filtering is done. I'm going to pour this liquid into this beaker and we'll drop the gold out of it. I'll rinse the beaker and make sure I get all of the lovely gold bearing liquid out of it. We don't want to lose any of it. And I'll give it another rinse or two off camera before I put it in the fume hood and we move on. Um, as for this stuff, I am going to discard this. I'm pretty certain I've got all of the precious metals out of it that I can, but I am going to keep the filter. The filter will go with my gold filters because uh, there will be a little bit of gold absorbed into the fiber of the filter. You can never get it all out, so I will save the filter. Okay. Let me set up the camera for uh, looking in the fume hood and we'll get this gold dropped. All right, here we go. Ready to drop the gold. It's, it's in the fume hood. It's sitting on the hot plate. The hot plate's off. We don't need any heat for this step. Everything's cold. Uh, what I do need to do is start up the fume hood because when I put the SMB and I'm using Stump Out by Bonied, which is sodium metabisulfite, it's a cheap source of it. Uh, when I put this in here, we're going to get a lot of sulfur dioxide gas, which is really, really obnoxious and actually quite toxic. So, on with the fume hood. And here we go with the SMB. This liquid is quite opaque, so we may not see the characteristic color change that comes with the gold coming out of solution. may just have to wait until we start seeing stuff land on the bottom of the beaker. Not getting a lot of foaming yet. Okay, I think that's probably enough for now. We'll let that sit and we'll see what happens. Okay, just as I suspected, because the liquid's so opaque, the color change really wasn't all that visible when it happened. It just kind of went kind of a little bit of a more chalky, dark yellow green color, and then it sort of cleared up again as stuff started settling to the bottom. So we are getting a film of gold 
on the bottom. Gold is settling out. Just going to let it settle, maybe overnight, and we'll see what we got. All right, the gold has had time to settle to the bottom. There's a nice film of gold on the bottom of the beaker. I'm sure it's probably not showing up in the video, but it's there. So next step is I'm going to siphon the bulk of the liquid off, and then I'll see if I can capture the gold at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to siphon this liquid off into this old pitcher down here. Get the bulk of it out of there. Now, I don't know what this brown color is in here. Um, it's one of the problems with processing IC chips. No two batches are the same, you know, because you're tearing apart uh, scrap equipment, e-waste, you're not going to be processing the same types and manufacturers of IC chips all the time. It's always, every batch is going to be different. Some batches are going to have more iron in them, some more copper, some more aluminum. So you never really know what you're getting. Fortunately, most IC chips do have at least some gold in them. So you're always going to get a little bit of gold. But uh, sometimes your liquid will be green. Sometimes it will be yellow. Today it's brown. It happens. Now, I'm going to let this liquid sit in this pitcher for, well, a few days, a few weeks, whatever, until I need to drain something else into the pitcher. And uh, what happens often is if I let this liquid sit in the pitcher, I'll get more gold coming out of solution. And the bottom of the pitcher will have a nice film of gold on it. So I have found that patience is a virtue when it comes to uh, processing e-waste for gold. You know, rather than dumping this straight into my stock pot, where I would eventually get the gold that way too when I process the contents of the stock pot, but if I just let it sit in this pitcher for, you know, a few days to a few weeks, I'll get a little more gold that way too. Okay, you don't have to watch this whole process. I'll get it siphoned off. Okay, here's the gold. After draining off the bulk of the liquid, I can start cleaning it up. I'll uh, give it a couple of boils in distilled water, boil in um, hydrochloric acid, some more distilled water, we'll dry it out and weigh it up. I'll probably skip all that just for purposes of brevity and I'll be back with the weigh up. Okay, here's our cleaned up gold powder in here. Not a huge amount, but I only did one crucible full of chips for this uh, demonstration. Normally I will do two, three, four crucibles at once. Got my little uh, container of gold powder here. Get this to tear. Let's see if I can get it in here without spilling it all over the place. It's looking like about 0.65 grams. Not a huge amount of gold, but like I said, it was a fairly small batch of chips I ran. Plus, off camera, I got 2.5 grams of silver. The silver, 2.5 grams of silver, nothing to write home about, but hey, it was essentially free. Took no extra expense to get it. So anyway, that's how I process plastic IC chips. That's the entire process. I hope you found that helpful, interesting, killed some time during COVID lockdown, whatever. If so, give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, subscribe to see future videos, and press the little bell icon that uh, YouTube makes you press to be informed when future videos come out. Because there will be future videos. I've got lots of projects going on. I'm into retro computing, uh, I've got uh, a whole bunch of projects coming out on gold recovery and silver recovery in the future. So subscribe to see them. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.